Denmark's second largest city has an interesting claim to fame. It's home to what's said to be the largest sperm bank in the world. This is a university town, so most donors are students. Technology is central to every step of the process. Virtual reality goggles are the latest addition, replacing traditional pornography. The company thinks the virtual environment will give a better end result. It has been proved in other studies that if you compare this quality of sperm from a man masturbating or a man having sexual intercourse, the sperm quality is better when it's stimulated by sexual intercourse. So making it as lively as possible, we may be able to improve the quality of the ejaculate. The new semen is taken into the lab. It's immediately analyzed, including using a computer to count the number of sperm. This used to be done manually with a microscope. A centrifuge separates ejaculate from sperm. The sperm is then frozen for a night to see if it can survive intact. Well, good sperm should be swimming <laughs> straight ahead. It shouldn't go round in circles. It shouldn't lie still. It should have one tail, not two. As part of the months-long approval process, the company also considers the donor's lifestyle. So if they travel a lot, we cannot take them in because we don't know whether they have virus or diseases. And then we need to know about their sexual behavior. We don't want an elevated risk of getting a, a sexual transmitted disease. We ask a lot about it and they promise to use a, a condom if they don't have a, a steady girlfriend. And the medical history of the donor's family is checked for any red flags like cancer or dementia. So you try to prevent uh, children getting genetic diseases. The approved sperm is stored long term in so-called straws in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees. So a sperm can be uh, frozen forever. The quality does not decline. If we thaw it the day after it has been frozen or we thaw it 20 years after it's been frozen, the quality is exactly the same. So there is no limitation on the time or the years that we can store sperm. Demand for sperm is growing after being hit by COVID-19. The staff speak 14 languages to deal with international clients. We export to more than 100 countries in the world, all the way from Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Europe, and also it depends on the local legislation. Uh, so it's often that that stands in the way of uh, women being able to purchase from us. For women looking for a sperm donor, it's an easy online process. Then you go and you say, okay, I would like to have a donor. He should be 175 centimeters tall, have blonde hair, blue eyes. They can put a lot of different filters. Then you get your selection. Then of course you have to determine should it be non-ID or ID release. And that means that if it's an ID release, when the donor child is 18 years old, then they can contact us and get the identity of the donor. In the marketing department is a young woman with a special connection to the company. Emma Gronbach was conceived with donor sperm that was provided here. She shares her experiences online and offers advice. So my recommendation for you would be that when people heard about me being donor conceived, they didn't really know how to react because all the things they'd ever heard about it was something negative. I wanted to create a more diverse picture of what donor conception could be like. My parents did like a children's book that they read to me as a nighttime story from I was three years old. So I've grown up knowing that I was then conceived. It has made me very secure in myself and in my family because I felt like I was a very, very wanted child. So for me, I think the most important thing was that my parents told the truth. Um, I do have an anonymous donor. 
Um, it's not been a problem to me, but it can be to some people. Emma hopes her story will become more common in other parts of the world, where similar fertility trends are emerging. The most important thing is love, and if we end up in a place where people who love each other and want children have the possibility of creating the family that they dream of, I think that would be amazing. I've definitely seen a positive change in people opening up, breaking down taboos, and I'm very, very happy to see it move in that direction. It's estimated that one in 10 kindergarten children in Denmark is now the result of some kind of assisted reproductive technology. How long before the rest of the world catches up?